In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through on how to use the Azure Data Factory to perform data cleaning and transformation by using the data flow of the Azure Data Factory to read, append multiple files and split the data into multiple columns and load the transformed data into the Azure SQL database for analysis. So let's get started. Again, if you're new to this channel and you're yet subscribed, please click on that subscribe and turn on the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Let's go through this project. I'm going to come to the portal.azure.com. First, I want to create my container in the storage account and then load some files into the container and then go to the Azure Data Factory. So I'm going to click on this cornerstone ADLS Gen 2 storage account type and under the data storage, click on the containers and then click on new container. I'm going to call this one Dirty Data. And then at the bottom, click create. In the Dirty Data container, we want to create a directory file called sales data and then click on save. And then we want to launch the sales data directory and then click on the upload. Before I upload, I'm going to come to my on premise folder. I've got this 2018 to 2023 data data.csv file. So I can control A to select the whole thing, drag across here, and then click on upload. So I'm going to have all the files uploaded. Let's just investigate the 2021 data data. Click on the edit at the bottom, click on the preview, and then we have the two columns, the other dates and the year to sales columns combined. So we're going to split this in the data flow of the Azure Data Factory before we can load into the target that is the Azure SQL database. So I can close this for now. Let's go ahead and launch the Azure Data Factory. I'm going to click on this launch studio and it's going to open in a separate tab for me and i'm going to land on the azure data factory welcome page so this is the welcome page first i love to create the linked services to the source and the destination so click on the manage and then i can see under the connections i can see the linked services for now i've got nothing click on create linked service and it's going to be the azure data lake storage and tool and i'm going to stick with this name and i'm going to choose my azure subscription and provide my storage account name which is the cornerstone adls gen 2 and test connection to the source so click on create now we want to create another linked service to the destination this is going to be azure sql database and I'm going to go with this name and provide my subscription. And I want to provide my server name, which is going to be Cornerstone IT Solutions. And let me scroll down. We want to provide the database name. I'm going to choose the Cornerstone IT Solution database. And this is going to be SQL authentication, authentication type. And this is going to be my username and my password, test connection to the Azure SQL. Click OK. So we have the link services created for the source and the destination, the sync. I'm going to come to the auto and then we can start the data flow. So under the factory resources, I'm going to click on this ellipses and I can choose to create a new data flow. I can use to organize myself by creating a new folder. I'm going to call this one data cleaning and click create so i can click on the ellipsis for the newly created data cleaning folder of the data flow factory resources and then create new data flow let me just collapse this for now i'm going to call this one data cleaning so let me just rename and then once i'm done go ahead and click enter to commit close these properties and we're going to have this data cleaning here so it's really important if you want to debug your job as you go along to enable the data flow debug so this has been enabled for me connected to the auto resolve integration runtime so that's fine i want to click on this add source and i want to add a new source now for the source i'm going to call this one data set connection 
and I'm going to scroll up a little bit and under the source settings, I can also provide the description and then I'm going to specify the source type. This is going to be data set automatically and I'm going to provide the data set by creating a new data set to the Azure Data Lake Storage tool. So I want to set for the Azure Data Lake Storage tool and then I want to choose the delimited text because our data set is comma separated values so go ahead and click on continue and i can go with this default name and i want to point to the azure data lake storage one link service and then i'm going to provide the file path this is going to be the container name the directory and then the file name so click on browse and then i'm going to see the data data container and I'm going to see the sales data directory and it's going to hold all the record 2018 to 2023. Now we want to actually append all these files and then perform the transformation across board. So click OK at the bottom and we're going to have the first row as headers checked automatically because our data contain first row as headers. And we're going to import the schema from the connection store. Click OK and that's sorted. Okay, I can click on the source options tab, the projection, I can see the columns. Now I want to come to the data preview because the data flow debug is enabled. I'm going to click on the refresh and I'm going to see the source columns, the two columns, that is the order date and the year to the sales column combined. Cool. Now, I want to go ahead and split this into multiple columns to achieve that. I'm going to create this step called the derived column schema modifier of the data flow. And for this, I'm going to call these split columns as my output stream name. And I'm going to come to the income stream. This is going to be detected automatically from the data set connection. And let's scroll up a little bit. So I can go ahead and create my columns by creating this add. And then I can click on add column. And I'm going to see this column one and column two. Okay, that's fine. So I can click on this NA to launch the expression builder. So I'm going to see the column one and I'm going to provide my expression. Now I'm going to call this one J as the first column to extract. And I want to use the split function. The split function requires string to split and the delimiter as the second parameter of the argument. So for the string to split, I'm going to come to the expression values and I want to set or click on this year region to cells. So this is going to be inside a curly bracket as a list of errors. And then for the second argument of the split, I'm going to use inside a single quote the comma separator. So comma and then I can close the bracket for now. Now, because the year column is in the very first position, I'm going to use the curly bracket, or that is the square bracket, to point to the first column as the index number one. And this is going to give me the year column. So I'm going to copy all of these and click on save. So this is going to give me the year, but this has been treated as a string data type. Now, in order to be treated as an integer, I'm going to come here, Ctrl X to cut, and use the to integer function, Ctrl V, and then delete everything to the back, close the bracket, and I can Ctrl C to copy, and then click on save. There we go. It has been transformed to one to three integer. Cool. I'm going to come to the column two. Uh, this is going to be the region. So I'm going to name this as region. And then for the expression builder, control V, I can get rid of everything here. And I can delete this and replace this with two. Copy the code and click on save. And then I can even create a new column from here. This could be the sub category, and I can come here, Ctrl V, replace the two with three, copy that, save, create a new column, and this is going to be the product around the product here, and then Ctrl V, replace wait for, go ahead and save, and then create a new column called the price. So price and for this i'm going to use the to integer control v delete everything close the bracket replace with 
five, copy that, save, and then I'm going to create a new column. And this is going to be the sales column. Control V, replace the five with six, lock that in by pressing the save. And there we go. So I can save and finish for now. I can come to the data preview, click on the refresh, and I'm going to see the new derived columns, the order, the year to the sales columns with appropriate data types, which is absolutely fantastic. Now, the other date has been treated as a string. So to transform that to a proper data, data type, I'm going to come to the derived column settings tab and then I can add a new column and I'm going to scroll down and then launch the expression builder and then I'm going to call this one the order date and I can go on and use the to date function so this requires a string and then the date format so for the string I'm going to choose the order date and then I can delete all of these inside a single code I can use the dd forward slash mm forward slash yyyy close the brackets go ahead and save and there we go so we're going to have this calendar which is absolutely fantastic I can save and finish for now Okay, now I no longer need a column called the year, region, and so on and so forth, but I can see that from here. So in order to drop that column, I'm going to create another step called the derived column. All right, click on that. And now before I do that, let's just create another column called the unit. So I'm going to use the derived column. And I'm going to come to the new derived column settings and I'm going to call this one units. And I'm going to scroll up a little bit. Okay, and I can launch the expression builder and I'm going to call this one units as the column name. And then I'm going to use a function called the divide. Now, the divide requires the first expression and second expression that is the numerator and the denominator respectively so for the first expression i'm going to come to this expression values and i want to search for sales column and then i'm going to come here and i want to search for price column and i can call cut the whole thing and use the to integer function ctrl v delete the whole thing from the back close the brackets and then I can commit, save. So we're gonna have the unit and then click on save and finish. So I can come to the data preview, refresh, and we're gonna see, okay, so we have the unit with the appropriate data type. Cool. Now I want to drop this column, it's of no use. Now when I come to the direct columns, unfortunately I can't see that column. So what I'm gonna do is to use another step called, let me just move this down a little bit, select. So click on that and I want to just do select under the schema modifier. And this allows me to select the column. So I'm gonna call this one um, delete and reorder columns. I'm gonna explain the reorder columns. So I can scroll up a little bit and I can click on this and I can see that here. So delete, so that's been deleted. And then I'm gonna scroll down. So I'm gonna move this unit above the sales. Why? Because we're gonna create in a moment a table called sales in our Azure SQL database that's gonna follow this pattern, the order date, the year, region, unit, pr product, price, unit, sales. So let me just copy this table, this script, and let's come here. And for now, I've got no tables. Can you see? Okay, so I'm going to control V and let me just change the name of the table. I'm going to call this one transaction. So let me just copy this and or let me just copy um, transaction data. So let's copy the whole thing and let's perform a simple select as soon as we create that. Select star. from transaction so let's go ahead and run all the scripts and there we go so we're gonna have the order date to the sales column with no results to show that's absolutely fine so we want to make sure that the unit is actually coming after the price column so the same pattern is what we define here so you can see the unit after the price and then the sales column. So this is what the, the, the select can do first. Now, 
we are done with the transformation. So I'm going to click on this and then provide the destination as a sync. So I'm going to search for the sync and then click on that. And I'm going to call this one data integration. And I'm going to provide the sync type. It's going to be data set. And I'm going to go ahead and create data set to my destination. Click on that. Okay, let's just change this name. Okay, I'm going to click on the new. And then we'll set for the Azure SQL database. Click on continue. And I'm going to choose my linked service. And I want to point to the newly created transaction underscore data. I'm going to choose now for the import schema. Click OK. And that's sorted. So I can see everything we've done. But before we go on, I'm going to come to the data preview of the sync and then preview because it's a good practice to double check your job so that we don't waste too much of resources. So let's see what everything is com complying to the destination. So everything looks good. All the dates to the sales, brilliant. Now I want to come to the factory resources and I want to create the pipelines. Let's click on this ellipses and I want to create a new pipeline. And let's just call this one data movement. And then press enter, close the properties, and I'm going to drag the data planning data flow across to the canvas and click on the validate. I can go on and debug, and I'm going to wait for some couple of minutes. All things being equal, this should give us a successful data integration into the Azure. SQL database. So I can see the job is in progress. I can see the name of the activity. And this is a data flow activity. And then we have the run start. And then this is the current duration 29 seconds. There we go. Activity status succeeded. Absolutely amazing. Let's go ahead and check this out. I'm going to scroll down and query this transaction underscore data and absolutely cool we have the records now let's check this out by writing a group by so i'm going to select the j column and i want to use the sum function on top of the sales column and i'm going to provide this as total sales and i'm going to come here and use the group by clause so group by the j as provided in the select let's go ahead and run this code absolutely cool so we have the 2018 2019 2020 and 2021 to 2023 total sales so this actually aligned with the 2018 to 2023 30 data so this is how we can use the azure data factory data flow to clean and transform data and read the data into the azure sql database for analysis i hope you enjoyed this video if you do like share with your friends and comment thank you for watching bye for now